Hello everyone! So today we're going to go over emergency coolant, waste processing, and this brand new flow monitor. So starting with emergency coolant, we're going to want to connect some dynamic tanks. So here I have a dynamic valve connected to the RTU network now. So for unit 1's dynamic tank, it's going to be for reactor 1, index 1, and then the dynamic tank's valve name, which is dynamic valve 0 in this case. And starting that up, we can see it here. Now coming over here, we're going to need to add the tank to the supervisor's cooling configuration for that unit. So down here, we're going to set this new value tank to true. If I can type. And starting that up, when we go over here, we now see the entry for the unit 1 tank. You see the status, the fill percentage, the actual quantity, the water level, and then the container mode, which is fill, empty, or both. Over here, now it's time to hook up the actual redstone control of the emergency coolant. So here I'll be using Immersive Engineering's redstone, which provides bundled redstone, which is very helpful here. So here you connect specifically an interface connector to the side of the computer. We're going to get wire connectors. We're going to go up here. We're going to put the one there just to connect easier. Actually, probably don't need that. And then we'll do it like that. So we'll set up to use these as the valves. So now we'll get some redstone wire. Hook that up here. And we have all of these connected. Now we're going to want to configure them with an engineer's screwdriver. Go up here. We know that this is an output weight, so we'll make note of that. Set them all to outputs. So now I'll set these to redstone sensitive so that we can use them as valves. That one already was. Go over here so we know all of these are outputs and the channel is white. So I'll go in here and I'll edit the RTU's configuration. So now let's add a redstone entry. Since it's all the same output, we can just keep it to one new entry. So we'll go down here and we'll un uncomment. Now we're going to uncomment our closing brackets as well. Now let's set this to emergency coolant. So in this case, for units emergency coolant, it looks like this. And we hooked it up to the left. And they're all on the white channel. So we'll start that up. So now we'll go up here and we'll see that these have disabled all these connections. So I'm going to do this just so the pipes are there. So we need emergency coolant now, this is going to um, enable this, which will open these valves. And now that we have a valve connected, we can go over here and we see a little green light indicating that the emergency coolant valve is connected. And then the little open down here, that's off because the valves are closed, preventing flow. And then if it's on, they'll turn white. So currently on this version, this might change in the future, but there'll be a little white light here indicating that emergency coolant's connected. In the future, it might just be on off indicating if it's active since now that we have this up here we can see if it's connected. Now it's time for waste. This one has a lot more valves and a lot more everything really. So let's get started. So I have an unconfigured RTU up here and let's get this solar neutron activator on the network and we'll come over here and get this SPS on the network. Now we're gonna just copy that to clipboard which is a nice little feature. And we're going to edit this config. So let's go down and put in our solar neutron activator. This is for our unit one waste processing. So the four reactor here will stay one. Index is one because this is our first solar neutron activator connected. And over here, let's grab the SPS, copy that. Put over here, paste that in there. And this is a facility device, so four reactor is zero. And it currently only supports one SPS, so the index will always be one. So let's save this. Let's see if those devices have connected. So we see an SNA and an SPS. One's for the unit, the other's for the facility. So let's go over here and look at our monitors. So now we can see SPS is idle and connected. And over here, we see solar neutron activators for this unit one loop. And we have a count of one. So since it's daytime right now, we can see that the max and the peak are the same. But if we set it to nighttime, I'll see that the max is now zero because you can't process any at night. 
So because these are outputs, the peak and the max, they're always going to be 10 times less than the input rate. So if you're processing one millibucket per tick, for example, it's going to actually be 0.1 millibuckets per tick of polonium generation. So that's what the peak and the max apply to. For example, if it's rainy, we'll start to see the max to drop down a bit. So it's still daytime, but since it's cloudy, they're not as efficient. Then we'll clear up the weather and we'll start seeing it go up. So over here, let's go over the waste production control briefly. So we have plutonium, polonium, and antimatter. And then we have PU fallback, which is plutonium fallback. What that does is it looks at all your solar neutron activators. And if your burn rate's way too high to generate, um, given the max, it'll switch to plutonium production. So if it's activated, you'll look, it'll be like that. If it's not, it'll look like that. So this will only apply to units that are in auto control. So we can see that it switches over and unit one waste is changing. If we did it manually, then it'll match whatever we manually command, not the auto. Down here, you'll see your plutonium rate, polonium rate, antimatter rate. This is the sum of all of your units. Um, plutonium is just what's going to be making pellets. Polonium will be either going to pellets or antimatter production. And then antimatter is just the output of the SPS. So getting these to show up is great and all, but we want to actually route our waste through them. And right now we see that none of our valves are connected. So let's get those connected. So first here, we have the unprocessed waste coming out of the reactor. So this is going to split two ways. So we're going to want these two valves. So this valve, when it's open, it'll let us flow and make plutonium over here. When it's going this way, it'll let us make polonium. So this is our plutonium valve, and this is our polonium valve. We're going to want to connect that up to here with an interface connector on the computer and just normal wire connectors here. So let's get those hooked up. Next, that we have polonium. Polonium can go different places. It can either go to an SPS or to make pellets. So over here, let's we're gonna do this just to little carry the signal. And then we're going to be able to turn off either the SPS or polonium pellet production. So we're going to make sure these are all redstone sensitive. Okay, now let's set these up. So for polonium, we're going to want to set an output. I'm going to pick red for this. Plutonium, we're going to do output. We're set it to orange. We'll go over here. Polonium pellets, it's going to be output. We're going to do yellow. Then antimatter, we're going to do output. And then lime. Now let's get this set up over here. And I picked those colors because those are the defaults. So now let's edit our RTU configuration. Uncomment all of these. Okay, so now this is for reactor because it's our reactor one. We'll put this on the right. And just to make sure, we have our polonium on red, plutonium on orange, polonium pellets on yellow, and antimatters on lime, which matches what we configured. Start that up. We see now we have a redstone entry. You see that some of these have already closed. Because if you remember, I set it to antimatter right before I walked away. So if we go over here, you can now see that the polonium is open and then the antimatter is open. So that means it'll let us flow to the solar neutron activators and then into the SPS up here. And if we say change to plutonium, we'll see the plutonium valve open, plutonium valve closed, the other valves closed too. And then I'll let it go to plutonium production. And then just for plutonium pellets, we'll see this one open, the antimatter close, and the pellets one open. And I'll go to polonium pro pellet production. So let's do that. Start this reactor up. I see our reactor running. So this is going to be producing some waste now. So we can see the polonium right down there, which is going to be the same since we only have one unit as this one. And we'll see that that's going to be producing spent waste. We can see our total Oh, look at that. So it's nighttime, so we had plutonium fall back on, so now it's switched to that since this max is now zero. So you can see that the valve automatically changed over to plutonium, which is now producing this, which is producing this spent waste. So we got our total spent waste, our total plutonium. This is for all units. If we take off plutonium fallback, we're going to go back to seeing no production since it's nighttime. 
So if we set it back to daytime, see that these starts running. Now we got actual numbers. This is going to be our totals again, except this time it's pellets. But if we switch to antimatter, that we're going to still see polonium, but no longer polonium pellets. We'll see up here, this is the production rate. Because of how the SPS works, it doesn't give me precise numbers to this precision. So it's going to jump around a little bit since it's getting 2.5, but it can't tell me 2.5. So this is an overview of this general flow monitor. This lower part we talked about with the waste, but up here we have the cooled coolant from a boiler, the heated coolant to the boiler. Now these two numbers, if they don't match, that's when you'll get the boil rate mismatch. And over here, if these two don't match, you'll get the steam feed mismatch. And there's a little bit of a tolerance, so they won't always match exactly, and don't worry. But if you do see that warning, you can check and see how big the difference is here. And it's usually going to indicate some kind of an issue. But when it's this small, it's okay. So to clarify, that would include things like not enough pipes, not enough coolant in the loop, or the boiler just not boiling at that temperature you have it at. So over here, then, you have the water and the steam to and from the boiler. Then over here, you have the relief valve, which is going to mirror the indication of steam relief valve open. So the steam relief valve is just the turbine's dumping mode. And this top blue line is coming from our dynamic tank, which is controlled by the emergency coolant valve, which then connects here. If you don't have any boiler, this won't be here. It'll just be the blue, white, blue line across and the white line across. So just to note, since this happened to be a boiler setup, but if you do not have a boiler, um, your emergency coolant valves will instead go into the turbine's output water that goes into your reactor instead of the input to the boiler. I could have also connected this to these pipes as well. Okay, that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below on our Discord or on GitHub discussions. If you want to know how to set up dynamic tanks for multiple units, Details on that can be found on the wiki, along with everything else I've covered today. And thank you for watching.